Gentlemen, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Thanks. Scott. Your Pretty backgrounds good. and your places where you're doing this interview are much more luxurious than mine, I have to say. Look at those lovely views. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even see. I, well, obviously, I don't have eyes in the back of my head. I have no idea what's going on back there. <laughs> it's just green. That's it. Okay. <laughs> uh, guys, congratulations on, on the film. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hopefully, I'll have some questions that you haven't heard in the last four or five months that you've been promoting the, the film <laughs> in this crazy cycle. Uh, that you've been uh, that you've been on since since you first uh, started talking about it, which is a long time. Has that been a strange, uh, Jude? Maybe for you, I'll start with you. How have you found the whole process of not just promoting the film, but promoting the film for for such a long time? Well, it's been very strange these past few months, but um, yeah, I just love seeing people and talking with them and making friends with them because one day you might see them again and say, "Oh, hi, I might remember you." it's all been so surreal for me and yeah even now it's still like i just have to take a second look to make sure that it's all real yeah kieran how is how has jude impressed you not just as a as an actor but just in terms of this whole because this this part of the world of films and promoting films is a, is a strange one do you think he's handled it quite well well, he's handled it much better than I have, to be honest. Um, yeah, he's, uh, he, no, he's, uh, I mean, he, 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 apart from his phenomenal talent uh, on screen, he's a, he's a gift to us all as a human being. And I blame his wonderful parents, Shaneen and uh, Daryl, for that. Um, they've uh, brought up this extraordinary, well, beautifully mannered, uh, intelligent young scamp as far as I can see. And uh, they're, uh, well, it's great. Shawnee and his mum has been traveling around as she's great company. And uh, she keeps a wary eye on him. And, uh, but in a way, he's his own young man now. So uh, he's very nice to be around. You've seen him kind of grow up over the last year, year and a half, haven't you? This is a, yeah. this is a, nice, a nice moment for you, I'm sure. I mean, <laughs> yes, I, I mean, I don't remember being uh, my own childhood that far back, just little snippets of memory, but to have matured as much as he has inside the year that we know is phenomenal. I matured with grace, I might say. <laughs> just wait. That's what they say, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just wait, Early days. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jude, I wanted to ask you about uh, auditioning for the film and how it came about for you and did did you know what it was up front did did, did your first meeting was it with with sir kenneth or did it take a little while to to get to the crux of what it was about well uh i do speech and drama lessons and i do poetry and extracts from shakespeare on wednesdays and i compete in different competitions and my speech and drama teacher usually used to send out like maybe one or two self tapes um a month and uh so for belfast i sent through the self tape a few days after um they asked if i could go on a zoom call as a callback and i did about five or six of those and the last few being with kenneth branagh in real life and meeting him was just such a pleasure he's a legend he's a household name in our house and yeah, it was just such a privilege to meet him. You got to learn the world of Zoom that we're all <laughs> learning to. I had no <laughs> idea what Zoom was a year ago, or two, a year and a half ago. What's Zoom? That's madness. Anyway, uh, Kieran, for you, I mean, I know this obviously touches on your own history and, and your childhood and everything else. How how well did you think and how, because Kenneth has this wonderful kind of humanity at the, the heart of this. It isn't, it isn't kind of telling you one side or another it's just telling you the story of the, the humans at the center of it how how fortunate do you feel to have been a part of something like this hugely fortunate hugely i mean i, I was thrilled when he asked me i was very, very honored and uh, and I, when i read the script he just knew that he had touched something at the core of his own identity that a lot of people wouldn't have known since he left at nine and you know developed his own life and uh, a lot of people i think didn't wouldn't even have known that he was born in belfast and lived there for 10 years but it, the the script from the get go, it just smacked of authenticity, you know, but, but slightly heightened or embellished for storytelling purposes. But um, I, I recognised somehow through the writing and the structure of the piece bits of my own family, bits of my my parents and my grandparents and the locations or how I describe them because I think coincidentally we grew up about half a mile away from each other, 
but I was born Catholic, he was born Protestant, so we never went to the same schools, segregated schools. Um, but we the, the same reference points, the parks, the waterworks, the Cave Hill Mountain, Napoleon's Nose, all these that are referenced. I, it, did, it was almost like I was really taken back into my own identity when I was back. Oh, mine would have been about 10 years before him. Yeah. I thought he was, uh, being knowing that I'm a Spurs fan and he's a Spurs fan, I thought he was from North <laughs> London. I never knew he was from Belfast. That so was a shock to me, seeing all of that. Oh, right, yeah. No, well, you know, <laughs> because, uh, I mean, Jude's a Liverpool supporter. I love him. I'm a, I'm a United supporter for my sins. And uh, But then when I was growing up, it was George Best. Uh, that's why a lot of us supported uh, United. And uh, Ken, of course, uh, there was Danny Blanchflower at Spurs. So yes. these great Northern Irish players. So that's how they follow them. I don't know why or how Jude supports Liverpool. Maybe he'll explain it to us. Why do you support Liverpool, Jude? <laughs> I was growing up watching my dad and my uncle watching football. And <laughs> Liverpool was obviously just the best team in the league. And they still are and always have been and always will be. I mean, to be fair, at your age, Jude, Liverpool have been pretty decent, let's be honest. Yes. Yeah, he's yeah, diehard. Yeah, hard. yeah, yeah. yeah. You've, you've, you've dodged a bullet not supporting Spurs, I tell you. Anyway, <laughs> um, Jude, let me ask you about, you've, you work with Catriona and Jamie and Judy and Kieran. For a first film, it must have, they must have put, made such an impression on you, uh, for you as a young actor. Do you, uh, did they, how did they rub off on you and was it a good experience? I, well, a great experience, I would imagine, working with such, such talents of the screen. Well, it was just a fabulous, like, experience in a whole, meeting all of these people, like Kieran, Judy, Ken, Jamie and Katrina, and they all taught me something different, um, and I put that all into this film, and I'll carry all that advice onto any future projects that I do. Sure you will. Kieran, I wanted to ask you, there's a line in the trailer that you say that lots of people have, have, have pinpointed, which is you saying... Uh, if they can't understand you, then they're not listening, which I, I think is such a great, great line for so many different reasons. Was that a fun line to play on set? Did you know that maybe that was going to be something that would resonate with with people, given not the connotations, but just what it means to, to different people? Uh, yeah, no, I, I understood the concept uh, originally, having because when I left Belfast, uh, although I, like, dude, I'd, I'd done a little bit of drama, so I understood a bit about making yourself clear. Uh, uh, and I had, I had had experience of that. Uh, what did you say? Repeat yourself. But I, I recognised it uh, a lot when I went up to Glasgow. And as we know, Glasgow is really a thick Scottish accent. And uh, I understood. The, I come from the north of Ireland. I understood what they were saying. But the actors from London didn't have a clue. I had to almost translate for them. And it's that interesting thing about that because, in, as we know, in uh, in Britain and Ireland, the accents change all over the place. Uh, and that idea of us, when you communicate with someone, you got to make the effort to really listen. You know, it's not a question of like, tell me what I want to hear in my own vernacular. You know, when you communicate with someone, you really got to work at the communication. And it is possible. You just need, I think the listener needs to go like and work it out and have fun working it out. You know, other, other, other sense of, of place uh, is always interesting to find out about rather than say like, can't understand you. Next you know, pointless. Yeah. And obviously the film's now finally coming out in the UK. How excited are you for people to, to see it? Because it's been kind of on people's radar for, for a long time. Are you, are you, dude, are you ready for people in, not just in the UK, but in Ireland to, to see the film? Well, yeah, for it to come out um, around here is crazy. And I can't wait to see my friends' reactions and the rest of my family to the film. And I think um, everybody in Belfast and especially the older generations will know about it and they'll love it just as much as everyone else. So I'm yeah, sure it's going to be very special for Belfast and all of Ireland. I'm sure they will. Gentlemen, lovely to talk to you. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Absolute pleasure and good luck with the film. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thanks. Thanks. Yes. Thanks, Scott. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey, you 